In this video, we're going to talk about probability trees. Now, a probability tree can actually grow anywhere in life. So, it's a really cool thing to learn about because literally out of any situation, you can imagine a probability tree growing. What is a probability tree? It looks something like this. And you may notice they always seem to grow sideways. What are these different branches? Well, this tree is a special type of tree that I can tell. It has two branches going at each segment. So there's one uh, split where you have one branch and another branch and another split, split up here and down here with a further two branches coming off from each one. I can tell it, this probability tree is talking about two different possibilities. But before we go any further, let's talk about a real life situation. Here we have a young innocent person who's not quite sure about probability trees and then boom, we're gonna throw one on top of her. So probability trees. Sarah picks, let's make it a bit bigger. Sarah picks a marble from a bag. There are eight marbles in the bag and five of them are green. The rest are red. She looks at the marble and then replaces it in the bag. She then picks another marble. Complete a probability tree. Here we go. Here's our event that had two different possibilities. The possibility is choosing a green marble and choosing a red marble. There wasn't another thing you could do. You couldn't pick a black marble. So there are only two different branches at each split. Let's label our probability tree. I'm going to label the branch going up as green. That branch, that first branch represents her first choice. Let's imagine she picked a green marble. Let's draw the bag here. There's our bag full of marbles. That branch is going to represent her picking a green marble. This branch is going to represent her picking a red marble the first time. The second split is her second choice. So the second time she picked out of the bag. Again, the higher branch I'm going to represent as being the green, her picking a green. And in this case, it'll be her picking a green again because she's already picked a green to get there. And the lower branch is being a red. This branch I'm going to represent as green and the bottom branch I'm going to represent as red. And now I'm going to ask a few quick questions about each of the branches that we've now got. Let's take this branch at the top. What does it represent? It represents the chances of getting a green and then a green. Now you know that, I'm going to ask you a few more and you have to tell me. What does this branch represent here? That represents getting a red and then a green marble. How about this branch? That represents a red and a red, and this branch is a green and then a red. Now we need to fill in the probabilities and complete the table. It says there are eight marbles in total and five of them are green. The rest are red. So that means that three are red. Five plus three is eight. So out of eight marbles, so the denominator is going to be eight, five of them are green. In other words, the probability of getting green is five out of eight. The probability of getting a red, therefore, must be three out of eight. 
Now, these two events, that first event, picking out the bag, and the second event, picking out a bag, are what's called independent events. In other words, the probability of one of them happening is not affected by the other one happening. It's a bit like I said, if I asked you, what's the probability of it raining in London and snowing in the Arctic? Well, there you could say they're somewhat linked by climate change or something like that, but the question was supposed to be um, independent. So what's the chances of someone in um, New Zealand called Emma tripping over and it, it raining in London? They're completely independent events. And here, because she, uh, Sarah replaced the coin, these are also independent events. It doesn't matter the second time whether she picked a green or a red the first time. The marbles don't care which one you picked first. They're just going to give you the same probability the second time as they gave you the first time. Having said that, what, are, what will be the chances of getting a green the second time? The same as the first time, so 5 out of 8. Oops, let's not do it there. Let's do it here, 5 out of 8. Chances of getting a red will still be 3 out of 8. And you can spot the pattern. So the chances of getting a green is 5 out of 8, and the chances of getting a red is 3 out of 8. Now, we have a more advanced question now. What about, what's the chances of, of her getting two greens in a row? So a quick question. What is the probability of Sarah picking two greens in a row? Well, you're probably wondering, well, that's that one at the top, isn't it? Green and green. But how do we go along the branches? Here's another key point that I, w I would love for you to remember. To go along the branches, you multiply. So to go along any branch, we always multiply. Let's underline that. It's really important to go along the branches you multiply. I would write that down if you have a notebook handy. So green and then green would be 5 out of 8 times by 5 out of 8. When we multiply fractions, we just need to multiply the numerator and multiply the denominator. That's 5 times 5, which is 25, and 8 times 8, which is 64. In other words, the chances of her picking two greens in a row is 25 out of 64. Now, a final question. What are the chances of her picking one of each colour? What is the probability of Sarah picking one marble of each colour? Think about that. Colour. Which two branches represent that outcome, having one of each colour. It would be, have a think about it, it would be these two middle branches. That's a green, then a red, and a red, then a green. Notice it didn't care which one came first, it just wanted one of each colour. To go along the branch, we multiply, so 5 out of 8 times by 3 out of 8 to find the probability of a green, then a red. 5 times 3 is 15, 8 times 8 is 64, so that one is 15 out of 64. And a red and then a green, again we go down the branches and so we multiply. 3 out of 8 times by 5 out of 8 is 15 out of 64. Now notice the questioner didn't really care whether we had a green first and then a red, or a red first then a green. They just cared about the probability of one of each colour. So what we do is we combine these two probabilities. To combine them, we simply add them. With fractions, if you have the same denominator as we do here, you can simply add the numerator. 15 plus 15 equals 30 over 64. We don't add the, the uh, denominator. So using the power and magic of probability trees, we've worked out the probability of Sarah picking one marble of each colour. Now, probability trees are so amazing, 
I would highly recommend you reviewing this video and practicing some different questions.